Welcome to All Saints Church Ripley. My name is Paul Harford, I'm the vicar here, and I'll give you a quick guide round of things that I think are quite interesting. Before we go in the building, we're having a bit of a look around the churchyard. And in front of me here, you can see the base of an ancient weeping cross. We believe this is the only one, or possibly one of two remaining such items uh, in the country. It was a destination point for pilgrims in the uh, Middle Ages, and if you look at the base of this, you can see that there are gaps carved out, and there's two theories as to what they were for. One is that pilgrims would kneel in them at the end, um, and it's thought that the gap is slightly too small to fit your knees comfortably, so it was a way of showing your penitence by kneeling in an uncomfortable position. The other is they're perfectly sized for someone's head, so it could be you knelt down when you arrived there um, to make your prayers and place your head at the foot of the cross. Obviously, the wooden cross there isn't the original one. Just here, uh, on our left, as we walk in, you can see our Easter garden, which is always there, lovingly maintained by members of our community, and a reminder to us that we are Easter people all the way through the year, not just uh, at the, um, well, at Easter time itself. As we make our way into the church building, um, you can see it's a church. And this has been a site of Christian worship for six or seven hundred years. Um, it replaced an older church in Ripley, which is now known as the Sinking Chapel, because it was a chapel that sank. Um, and parts of that were brought up here, which we'll have a look at as we make our way around. So I walk down the middle, uh, you might notice, if you look very carefully, that the pillars on the left of me and the pillars on the right are different in shape. Um, and I think that's to do with uh, an extension being added on at some point, but I don't know entirely for sure. You'll also notice there's stained glass windows down the right-hand side of the church and stained glass windows on the left. And that's because uh, a few decades ago, there was a great storm that blew in stained glass uh, from the left-hand side windows and they were never replaced. As we make our way through the nave into the chancel, um, you can see a few things of interest in here. Uh, first is the ceiling. If you look up, you can see that our uh, ceiling is a beautiful example of painted Victorian woodwork. Um, and it's an extraordinary piece of art really um, and it also contains a deliberate mistake i think a reminder that nothing's perfect save god alone so um, if you can spot that i'll be very impressed you'll also notice as uh, it goes above the altar into the uh, sanctuary area that the paintwork changes slightly in style and design and you can see a few things if you look closely up there um, that mark things out on the right hand side the second panel in uh, reflects the lamb of god um, which, of course, is what we remember at the Eucharist, Jesus coming as the Lamb, the sacrifice for us all. And then on the left-hand side, you can see a pelican. Um, and if we make our way back round, um, if you look down at the kneelers, uh, you can also see a, pe a pelican um, on the floor at the altar rail. And the pelican was a symbol uh, in the Middle Ages of the love of God, and particularly of communion, because it was believed the pelican mother would peck her own breast, pluck out her lifeblood to feed her young. And as we remember Christ's sacrifice, we remember his giving of his own lifeblood for our, our benefit and our gain. You will have noticed as well the organ, if you look closely behind me, um, or <laughs> to the left of me as we walk through there, it's currently covered in plastic sheeting, so you can't see the organ pipes, sadly. Um, and the reason for that is because the lead was recently stolen off the roof of our church, and we've had to spend a lot of money and a lot of time repairing that, and to make sure nothing fell into the organ and stopped it working during that time, it's had to be covered over. Hopefully one day soon we'll be able to welcome uh, people back in um, to see the organ uncovered. It still works, but we don't get to use it very much at the moment for lockdown reasons. Over here in this corner is a little scene um, uh, artefact, really. It's an account of the money belonging to the poor of the parish of Ripley. And it's a, a reminder of a fund set up for the support of the poor of Ripley um, by the, the a joint venture, I think, believe between the Ripley Castle and the church back in 1858. Um, and a descendant of that fund still exists to this day. And it's just a nice reminder of the work of the church through the ages in supporting the least and the most vulnerable and those who are in need of help. And a reminder that that work still goes on. The tomb that we are just walking around to our right, um, back behind the pulpit there, is the tomb of Sir Thomas Ingleby. Um, who was knighted by King Edward III for saving his life from a wild boar. And the story goes that they were out hunting, and you can see the boar beneath his head, actually, if you look closely. Uh, and Sir Thomas Ingleby then saved the king, and as a result of that, was uh, given his knighthood, given the land of Ripley Castle, and the family have been here ever since with the um, 
in the hope that Christ will send light into it. If we make our way down the side of the church again, you might get a better view of some of these windows. Um, and they remember, obviously, different saints and different stories through the ages, interspersed with some of these tablets and memorials of other people who have been a part of the church life through, through its history. Back in this corner of the church, we come to an area that's set aside for remembrance. We've just walked past our There But Not There Tommy, a campaign from a couple of years ago reminding people of those who were lost during the war. Um, and behind us now, uh, I just guess loop around the back here, uh, to see the font, um, you will also see an area of remembrance um, with the plaque to the uh, fallen um, in the uh, first great war, 1914 to 1919, 19, um, and the standards of the Scots Guard and uh, British Legion standards that's been laid up in the church. And that's uh, an important part of our work as a community place to remember the service of those who've come before us. The back of church uh, is the font, obviously used for baptisms. And again, a reminder of some of the benefactors of the parish. And if you look closely at those boards, you'll see the name Hardesty uh, appearing again, which is the same name as you'd have seen on that board out the front of the church. Again, a reminder of the history um, of helping out those in need. We're going to make our way into the churchyard on the far side of the church now. Um, and you can see that this has been a place that's been used to remember and to care for those who have departed for a long time from the age of some of the graves. You can also see, sadly, some of the challenges that are ever present in a small rural church. Um, a lot of the gravestones, because of their age, are beginning to uh, give way and beginning to become slightly dangerous. There's one here that's been fenced off for that very reason. Um, and obviously, that's a great expense to try and put those things right. One of the ongoing kind of expenses that we, that we do face. But we do our best. Uh, hopefully, you can see how well kept the churchyard is. Um, we do our best to keep things as neat as we can. And we are working at the moment to do some reparation to these graves and to try and track down some of the families as well. Um, because it's actually the family's responsibility. Uh, they are the owners of the headstone. But obviously, you can tell from the age that that's not always going to be possible. If we make our way towards the other gate of the churchyard, um, you can see again the weeping cross uh, appearing around the corner behind the church to our left. Um, if we just take a detour through the middle here, uh, under this window um, to our left now, you can see uh, some sort of round pock marks in the church wall, and they are supposedly a bullet marks from the Civil War, um, from the execution of prisoners stood up against that wall. Other people argue they're erosion um, over time from wind and rain, but uh, I like there's some romance to the, to the other story. We're nearly back out onto the church road and you can begin to see some of the beauty of the wider Ripley village here as we make our way through. Um, it's a tourist destination for very obvious reasons and a lot of people do enjoy coming here. O over on our left, uh, you can see just beneath the, the flag that's flying there, the war memorial, um, an important part in the centre of the village, an important uh, way of remembering um, how things were. And you can see the Boar's Head pub. Um, again, an important part of the village, sadly, at the moment, not as active as it would have been in the past and hopefully will be again. Thank you for joining me on our walk through the church and uh, I hope that you've enjoyed it. God bless you. There we go. That's good.